Hey friends, whether you are an entrepreneur or a writer like me and trying to optimize your work from home life, or you have suddenly found yourself working your out of house job now at home with the craziness of the world, and you're trying to figure out ways to motivate yourself, to stay on task, and to organize your day, I've got you covered. I've been working from home for nearly two years now, and although I wouldn't call myself an expert, and I think there's lots of different ways that you can work from home effectively, hopefully you guys can take these tips, try them out, and see which ones work best for you. So in this video, I'll be sharing my top tips and tools I use to work more effectively from home, including how I come up with my goals, how I manage my time, stay motivated, minimize distractions, and if you stay till the end, I'll also give you a look into what two days in my actual work from home life looks like. And if you find that you wanna learn even more, I've actually put together a whole work from home playlist that I've linked in the description of this video where I go into some of these tips in even more depth. First, I wanna give you one sort of overall tip and that is to treat your work from home life like an out of the house job. And this can include things like actually get dressed in the morning, have a designated space to go to work and only do work and sort of clock in and out of that time using a schedule. Now, a bunch of you are probably listening to that and being like, that's sort of why I got away from my out of the house job so I could wake up in my PJs and just do work on the couch and not care about when I started that or when I did laundry or when I did all of those things together. And I'll just be honest and say, yes, when I first started working from home and even every now and again, I do just wake up in my PJs and spend all day in them and don't do my makeup and sometimes do work on the couch. But what I wanted to stress is that I am most productive and I get the most done and I am really able to separate my personal and like rest life from my business life when I, one, have that designated space. So I'm actually going to link in that playlist a vlog type video where I gave a tour of one of the renditions of what my home office looks like. And I just really set that up to just be a workspace and a space I loved to go into. And that just really helps me and my creativity and my focus stay in the right place. And I can literally go into that space, do my work, and then go into the rest of my house for rest and family time. Otherwise, if I'm blending, sort of doing work on the couch a whole lot and not really having that separation, I tend to overwork or I tend to get distracted and not make the best use of my time. Now, if you're not like me and you don't have a whole nother room that you can dedicate to just your work, you can definitely just take a part of a room or set up a desk in a certain space or even just a space if you have to on your dining room table that can be your workspace, especially if this is more of a temporary thing. Whatever it is though, make sure it is a space just for your work so you can get there and it really helps you focus. This is also a space where I try very hard to limit distractions. I also have moved to shutting off pretty much all of the notifications on my phone so that when I go to my phone, it is because I want to, not because notifications are pulling me out of my productivity. And it's also really good to just have some communication with people in your household so that they know that when you go to that space that it is for work and that if they need you and it's an emergency, great, come on in. But otherwise I am working from this time to this time and I need some peace and quiet so I can focus. The other thing I really wanna do more, but I do definitely less frequently is actually put on my face and wear real clothes because it's a whole mindset thing where if I'm in my pajamas and I'm just not feeling my best, my productivity level definitely goes down. And schedule, which I'm gonna talk about in a lot of depth in just a minute, but that's the other thing too, where if I'm not setting like a time of I'm going to start working here and then I'm going to end here, I'm definitely a person that can overwork, but I know that some people too, if they don't set a schedule, they can underwork or they can feel like they're not working enough. But before we get too far into schedules and things like that, I think the first thing you really need to sit down and do once you have that dedicated space is to get clear on your goals and your priorities because you can't can't really organize your time and manage that effectively if you don't know what those are. Now, if you're more in a position where you have an employer and you're working from home, they're already hopefully giving you those goals and priorities. But if you are an entrepreneur or you're trying to organize your writer life like I am, then what I found really helpful was to figure out three main goals and priorities 
for my entire year. And then I have like an eight step strategy that I then figured out how I was going to make actionable steps on those goals quarterly, monthly, weekly, and then daily. If you wanna learn more about this process and how I actually gave all of those steps to my patrons on patreon.com and we worked through all of that together, I will link that video in the playlist that I talked about and you can check that out later. Once you have your goals and priorities, and again, this is whether you are setting them yourself or someone else is for you, you still have to organize your time and sort of give yourself a schedule so you can actually take each piece of what you really need to do and put time quantities to them. Because if you say, hey, I'm gonna get this done, and you don't set a time block for when you're going to try to get that done, then it could take so much longer than you intend for it to take. So what I really love doing is actually taking Google Calendar and using the different color coding categories to separate into my different goals and priorities, and then set different time blocks for a regenerative schedule that sort of goes on repeat every single week. Now, this might be something that totally overwhelms you, and I do have a whole video in that playlist where I sort of break down how you can do this for yourself. The other thing though that I do talk about in that video is not just setting up a schedule that you think will work, but actually spending some time tracking your hours. So not just time blocking, but time tracking. So even if you have a schedule or you're just trying to figure yours out, I would definitely say to use Google Calendar to then as you're doing something, so I'm filming a video right now, I will put in maybe this is gonna take me an hour or two to film this video in my Google Calendar. And then if it takes longer or shorter, when I'm done, I will adjust that. So then I can then see how long it actually took me. And the next time I go to record a video, I can then consider the information that I found when I was time tracking, maybe over the course of a couple weeks, and then adjust my normal schedule going forward so I can be more effective with my time. That was sort of a lot that I just said. So again, you should definitely check out that full tutorial in the playlist if you want to learn more. But seriously, time blocking and time tracking has been such a game changer for me and my business. Speaking of productivity tools like Google Calendar, you should definitely have at least one one tool where you are tracking your goals and your time, and that's helping you stay focused. For me, I actually use three different tools, my Google Calendar, my bullet journal, and my Trello Kanban board. I'm not gonna take time in this video to share the entire process of how I use all those things because you guessed it, I already talked about it in another video, which I'll link in that playlist. But basically, I took the time to really spell out how I use each of these tools so that you guys could see the benefits and the uses of each one and then choose which one you wanted to try or which combination you wanted to try and see which one worked best for you. One tool that I did not talk about in any of those videos though is a brand new tool app thing that I have been introduced to by my friends called Habitica. And basically it is an app that sort of meshes to-do lists and rewarding yourself with that by turning it into a kind of video game RPG thing. So you should definitely check it out if you're into video games RPGs. In it, you have an avatar and that avatar can get weapons and equipment and pets. And you can even team up with your friends and do challenges and even battle virtual beasts. And you do all this by getting your to-do list done. It's really fun. Because I already have all these other tools for more of my business stuff, I actually use Habitica for more personal habits that I wanna develop like remembering to get up and walk around and do laundry and stuff like that. But I also know people who love to use it for their business stuff too. So if just making a to-do list and checking things off doesn't do it for you and you need a little bit more of a fun incentive, I would definitely check out Habitica. My next tip is to actually do working from home with other people, sort of like you have coworkers. And again, you might have this if you are working for somebody else already, but if you don't, I would highly encourage you to find some accountability Buddies. Some people who are doing similar things to you that you can network with, that you can sort of check in with on a daily or weekly basis and share your goals and sort of have that accountability with other people because I've been doing that a lot in the last couple of years and it is so motivating and so helpful. A couple of ways that I've been doing this is with critique partners or with my mastermind groups. And if you don't know what a mastermind group is, it is awesome and so helpful. And I've linked a video down below with a whole Q&A where me and my mastermind group answered all of your questions. But basically it is a group
group of people again who are in the same boat as you going for the same goal and we're either meeting on a weekly basis to share those goals and check in and encourage each other and give each other ideas or you can even do daily productivity sprints with them you can also do these by yourself where you just set a timer for 30 minutes or 40 minutes and be really focused on a certain task and then when that timer goes off you stop and you take a break but I really love doing this again with accountability partners because then you get to check in with each other and sort of reinvigorate and motivate each other and then do it again. Some of my mastermind friends and my critique partner friends do this through Marco Polo or through Instagram or through text message and we don't do it all day every day but those days that we are really wanting to get stuff done and we're already in communication we'll just say hey do you guys want to sprint for a few hours and do check-ins and we'll do that and it is so helpful i also run these kinds of productivity sprints with my patrons over on patreon.com so especially if you're a writer looking to network with other writers and have that accountability on a daily basis you can definitely check out my patreon which i'll link right here and join us for those productivity sprints and all the other resources we have on there. Ready to see all these tips in action? Well, that first video in the work from home playlist is actually a two day vlog where I vlogged two days of my work from home life. One focused more on business, one focused more on writing, and I also show a little bit of my morning routine. Also, if you are a writer and you're not currently able to work as many hours for your normal job, or you've even lost your job during this crazy time in our world right now, you might be looking for new ways to make some extra extra income during this time. If that's the case, I'm also including in this playlist my video where I share three side hustle ideas for writers. There are many ways to make a supplemental income online right now, but if you're like me and you're a writer and you would like to have some way of making side money that actually relates to your writing and would eventually support your writing and future books and writing journey, in this video, I shared the three side hustles that I personally use to make a side income while I'm writing my books. If you wanna see that video or any of the other full tutorials I've referenced today, definitely check out that playlist in the description next. And if you have any more questions, always feel free to leave a comment below or message me on Instagram. If you found these tips super helpful, don't forget to like this video and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss future writer-related tips like this one, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.